Welcome back, it's Emily, and today I have something super, super special for you, mostly for me. Today I'm going to be bringing to you a small unboxing, but this big box is the quarterly box. I have to explain. This one is just a Goodreads giveaway that I won. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so excited. It's really, it sounds really cool. Quarterly box, it sounds like, because I never got it before, it's like you get a box every three months, every quarter of the year, and it's curated by certain people, I guess with credentials that they know what they're doing enough to like send out all these boxes of stuff for people to learn from and read and I don't know I don't know if it's always a book it sounded like there's like fitness and cooking there's all kinds of stuff where you can get a box of like supplies and then like learn how to do something I don't know it sounded really cool the boxes are like fifty dollars a hundred dollars jeez so this one was only fifty a lot of well-known booktubers were sent the YA book that is in this box. Ordinarily, I would not spend $50 on a surprise box, but since I knew what the book was and it was one of my most highly anticipated book releases of this year, I caved and got it. Like, like I didn't even know a lot about Quarterly, and then I was just like, YA, Beth Revis, author of the Across the Universe trilogy, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Got this in the mail yesterday, took everything in me not to open it. I don't know if they do YA books, um, book boxes every three months. It sounded like it was a new thing. I'm just gonna get into it. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the camera off so I don't hurt myself. <laughs> do this with me. Whew. Oh, maybe not. Wow, anticlimactic. Okay. Oh, packaged with radness in LA. Ooh, cool. I'm over in PA. All I knew about this going in was that there was the main YA book by Beth Revis. It's curated by Beth Revis. And there's also two other books included in the box that inspired her. So, and they're in here. Like, like that's exciting that you're, that you're getting books that inspired an author. And it's like, <sighs> whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. There is a card, it looks like. A photo holder cable. So, okay. Cool. Uh, Emily Dickinson. Whoa, what is that? Blank note card with quotes that stick, stickers included. I'm not putting stickers on Emily Dickinson. Okay, the main book's on the bottom. And a book plate, signed by the author. Oh, is it a sticker? Can I put it, like, in the book? I think it's a sticker. Oh my gosh! I have that book. Sorry. <laughs> the end, something like that. Am I saying that right? Oh, the end or some... It says or in the latter, I didn't see that. By Anne D. Ellis. And this one, which I always say wrong, is it Belzar? Belzar. By Meg Wolitzer. This actually started reading, and it was really sad and kind of depressing, so I stopped reading it. I mean, I love, like, dysfunction and, you know, mental illness books, but sometimes I just can't read them. Um, I do love the paperback edition, though. It's really nice. The moment we've been waiting for since, like, February. Dun, 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 dun. It has little, little post-its in it. Phoebe is named for Holden Caulfield's little sister in The Catcher in the Rye. Oh my gosh! <gasps> is this like... Are these notes? Are these... Are these notes like drawn by the author, like written by the author? This happened to me. My brother told me these exact words as I drove on an old logging Colorado never... Oh my gosh! Dude! This book has little notes in it, I guess, from the author explaining why characters' names are what they are and, and things that happen in the book that actually like happened to her that she included. Oh my gosh. Bo creeping around his room like this is my nod to the yellow wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins. Gil Charlotte Perkins Gilman, you should read it. The yellow wallpaper, oh my gosh! The yellow wallpaper is about a woman who like goes crazy and she locks herself in her room. No, or does she, I don't know. Because she can see this woman in the wallpaper or there's, oh my gosh. Really good, really good story. But it has little notes from the author in it. Oh my gosh. Happy twirl. What? I gotta turn the camera off so I can just like cry a little bit. After further inspection of the box, I realized this is not a card, but it's like the little note that you get to explain what's in the box. We all have these threads, invisible though they be, that connect us. Ooh. Does Bo actually have the ability to travel through time? This book kind of sounds like this book. Here are the other books. Bells Are by Meg Wolitzer was the first book to come to mind. In it, Jam, the other students, she's in this literary studies class. They have a journaling assignment, and then they discover how magical writing can be. Got this one in the box, but I already had the hardcover, which I totally love having multiple editions of books because I am a collector, so. It says that Reeve, Jam's boyfriend, her old British boyfriend from her past school, is gone. And then 
on the summary on the back of this one, it says, devastated by the death of her first love. So it's like he's gone, or he's dead, like I couldn't, like, who is he? He's dead, he's dead. Actually, I think I knew that because I started reading it, but, uh, I forgot. They call themselves Belzar, is that right? Because it's kind of like... We Were Liars, where they call themselves The Liars. And then in this one, there's also a death. So, Emmy has a friend Kim, but Kim has a chronic heart condition. So the girls make up a plan to connect once Kim crosses over the other side. So, like, this is not only a contemporary, sad, physical ailment book, but also a ghost story. It sounds really cool. It sounds good. It sounds good. Writing a world without you made me realize just how many people I could have reached out to, and how often we all make the mistake of thinking we're alone. Does that sound like yourself? Because that sounds like me. We're not. And she explains this. Um, she says, Bo sees reality through the time stream, a series of strings that connect past and present. String cord. We all have these threads, invisible though they may be, that connect us. Oh. <laughs> Bo's thread that ties him to the girl he loves is bright red. In this box, there's a red string photo holder. Fill it up with images of people you love and remind yourself that you're connected to people who care about you whenever you need it. Oh, can I just freak out a little bit? Growing up, my brother had a mental illness that seemed to push him away from me and drive our family apart. As I was writing the novel, particularly with the introduction of both sister Phoebe, I started remembering the past. And what I remember most was how lonely it was. I was terrified of my friends and the outside world discovering the secret of my brother's mental health struggle. <sighs> Holy moly! Not only did this box contain one of my highly anticipated releases of this year, A World Without You, it contains two more books similar to the book that inspired the author. And not only that, a couple bookish goodies. And not only that, mental health awareness? A girl cannot ask for anything more than that. I need a moment. I need a moment. Because this is amazing. Whoa. What? Need a moment. I need a moment. It's a moment that I'm having. I think Beth Revis is one of my favorite people now. I cannot get over the sticky notes in this book. There are a bunch of them. All like little secrets, all secret notes from the author. You just feel like the, the author is sitting beside you, telling you like you read a paragraph and they're like, oh yeah, let me explain why I wrote that. <laughs> I guess I did not yet explain what this book is about. So, okay, okay. So time travel is really confusing to me sometimes. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna read the summary because I feel I'm not gonna really do it justice here. Okay. What if finding her means losing himself? 17-year-old Bo has always had delusions that he can travel through time. Delusions, though, are they? When he was 10, Bo claimed to have witnessed the Titanic hit an iceberg, and at 15, he found himself on a Civil War battlefield, horrified by the bodies surrounding him. So when his worried parents send him to a school for troubled youth, really? Really? Gosh, parents. They never understand. Bo assumes he knows the truth, that he's actually attending Berkshire Academy, a school for kids who, like Bo, have superpowers. Oh, God. At the Academy, Bo falls in love with Sophia, a quiet girl with a tragic past and, a, and the superpower of invisibility. How does he meet her, though, if she's invisible? Sophia helps Bo open up in a way he never has before. In turn, Bo provides comfort for Sophia, who lost her mother and two sisters at a very young age. But even the strength of their love isn't enough to help Sophia escape her deep depression. After she commits suicide? I was in the middle of reading The Memory of Light by Francisco X. Stork, or whatever his name is, and um, it was just, it was just, it was about suicide. It was like the whole book, and I was like, I can't, I can't read this, I can't. After she commits suicide, Bo is convinced that she's not actually dead. He believes that she's stuck somewhere in time, that he somehow lost her in the past, and that now it's his job to save her, and as Bo becomes more and more determined to save Sophia, he must decide whether to face his demons head on or succumb to a psychosis that will let him be with the girl he loves. Succumb to a psychosis that will kill him. <sighs> I changed my mind about this book. I can't read it. I mean, that's exactly the kind of book I love, but it's exactly the kind of book that just wrecks me. It is blurbed on the front by Alexandra Bracken. If anybody wants to see what it says, I'll read it to you. A heartbreaking, beautifully complex look at mental illness, life, and loss. I tore through the pages, and days later, the story still had a hold on me. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's so Tumblr. One more package to unopen. Unopen? Unopen? Close? One more package to close. 
I love reading and I love words, but sometimes they escape me and I just am lost. This is a Goodreads giveaway prize. Is that a pull tab? Nope. This cover, this, this book, this cover is so pretty. <gasps> Look at this. It's so pretty. It looks kind of blurry, honestly. It looks a little blurry, but eh, I don't care. Advanced uncorrected galleys not for sale. It's an arc. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is Ripple by Helen Smith Meloche. Meloche? Meloche? Melancholy? Malachi? Not sure. When their two adult lives, two like really adultish lives, lead them down self destructive paths, these broken teens find a way to heal in this YA novel perfect for fans of Helen. Helen. Ellen Hopkins. So there's some mental dysfunction in this one too. Tessa feels like a pressure cooker. Wrestling for control of her life, there's a random guy that she hooks up with. Confidence builds. Then she's caught red-handed. Then she has a secret to keep. Jack is a prankster who lives for bucking the system. He copes by defacing public property. I guess they meet. Tessa and Jack are drawn to each other, discovering the best parts of themselves, the parts worth saving in the process. An affecting and provocative portrayal of the urges that drive us and the strength we must find to overcome them. Ripple is an absorbing standout debut. It's a debut novel! Oh my gosh! Cool! That's exciting. It just feels like you're so supporting them, you know, by reading their stuff and then writing a review and telling all your friends about it. You know how at the end of book haul videos and, like, unboxings, they hold up the books and it's like this tower... Well, I mean, I've had many towers in the past, but here's my tower for today. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will come at you with another video, hopefully in a week. Bye!